Good morning. I wanted to share with you a couple of my favorite books about shapes, making things with shapes. So this one is called Color Zoo and it's by Lois Ellert. If you have not seen any Lois Ellert books, you need to check those out from the library. She does beautiful art, but these are with very simple shapes. So I'm going to show you this book and I'm so, it won't even take me a minute to read it and I'm sure you will love it. It's called Color Zoo. Uh, shapes and colors in your zoo, lots of things that you can do. Heads and ears, and beaks and snouts, that's what animals are all about. I know animals and you do too. Make some new ones for your zoo. Tiger, mouse, fox, and then it shows you the shapes that they use. Square, triangles, and circles. And they did more. Ox, monkey, deer, and the shapes that they used for those. One more set. Lion, goat, and snake. And those are the shapes for those. I love Lois Ellert and I love the shapes that she uses to make animals. Another author and illustrator that I love wrote a book called Picture Pie. His name is Ed Emberley and he likes to make books that tell you how to do things and the steps that it takes to do it. So that's what this one does. And this, the, this book will only have circles and pieces of circles, like pieces of pie. So that's why it's called Picture Pie. Now I'm going to read this one and I might not read exact words, but don't worry, it's not an AR test so you don't have to worry about it. I'm just going to enjoy the book. And it, like I said, Ed Emberley's Picture Pie. And it was discarded from our library. A circle drawing book. So if you start to look close, you'll see that all these things are made from pieces of the pie. This book shows how a circle divided like a pie can be used to make pictures of all kinds of things. These four basic shapes can be put back together to make a set of other more complex shapes. And there are lots more shapes you can make. Here's, an, I, here's one design, page of designs, that uses the different pie pieces to make pictures. And these are just designs. They're not like the animals that Lois Ellert made. But later, here's more designs. Am I? And this one is really complex and colorful. But still, it's all just pieces of the pie. More, you can repeat the patterns. This is what we're gonna practice today. As you can see, it's more of a book. And then the little kids, by the way, got this page in their uh, paper packet. So if you have a younger brother or sister, it will tell you exactly how to make the pieces of the pie. But this is what we're going to do right now. So ahead of time, I had some a, a special friend help me and we cut out circles and then we cut those circles in half. Okay? And after we cut them in half, I have that set right there. And then we cut them into four pieces of pie and I have that set right there. And then we cut them into eight pieces of pie, and I have those right there. So those are all in front of me, and I don't know if you can see them anymore, but it won't matter since you already know what I did. Now to do all of this, I would take a piece of paper. I don't think I have very much pink. So let me just take a piece of paper, and I could take a cup, I could take the top if I want a large circle or the bottom and just draw around it. Thank you, Bria. That looks much better with that in the, in the view. So I do that and then I cut them out. Okay, if you have a compass, 
you certainly can use a compass and that makes it your drawing a perfect circle also so those are two ideas but you know me I have never cared about perfect perfect is just not really a word that matters to me I use the word a lot I'll say oh look at your work that looks perfect but I don't mean like perfect like the circle is exactly a circle but then after I do this to make sure that I do get a half I go ahead and fold it sorry about that I go ahead and fold it because otherwise I might not exactly see what looks like a half. So I fold it and then I cut it and I fold it so that I can see the line and then I just cut right on that line. And there's my half of half. So it's, it's great fun to eat a half a pie but you might get a stomach ache. And then I take this and I fold it in half and I have fourths. So Mrs. Gardner would be so proud of me that I'm doing math it goes right along with our hallway art and now I've got fourths this is a fourth of the pie and then I can take that and I cut it and I can make an eighth of the pie now that's the way it should be you eat about an eighth of a piece of I mean an eighth of a pie when you have your piece okay so these are ready to go and I could put them in my boxes but you get the idea all of that is cut and ready to go so in my book, I am going. To, uh, it shows me how to make lots and lots of designs. So if I want to make a symmetrical design, I'm going to take my square of paper and make an X so that I can figure out where the middle is. So when I make a design, I like it to be symmetrical, and so I might put something in the middle. Now I can start with anything. If I want to start with eighths, that's fine. If I want to start with quarters, that's fine. Doesn't really matter. The idea is that you're just going to keep going. So I think I'll take my eighths and I'll put, or sorry, quarters, and I'll put them down here until I get a nice design. Now it probably would help. Bria, could you get me some tape? It's right over there. I'll make my papers lay flat because it's it's bunching up on me. I didn't think about that ahead of time. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, just a couple will work. Perfect. Oh, there I used that word again. All right. So then I got these, and I like them going to the center like that. And then maybe I want these to go out to the center out like this and then I just keep building my design I can have it go like this or maybe like this or maybe I want two of the same color it doesn't really matter the idea is that I build and build and build until I get colorful designs like Ed Emberly had so I think oops these are the birds that's the next part so this is the idea. I want to keep building from the center out to make a nice design. All right, then I want to make a bird. So just like Lois Ellert, Ed Emberly used shapes to make his birds, but for this book, he only used circles. So let me shove this over to the side and can you still see my white paper? I'm gonna go ahead and make a bird. So it shows me step by step how to do it. So I'm going to take a half a, a half a piece of blue, half a pie of blue, and I'm going to lay it down like that. And then I want a quarter of a piece of blue, and I'm going to lay it down like that. And then I want a tail feather. Now for this, you know what? Ed Emberly says use a quarter like that. But maybe I think that's too big of a tail. I get to decide for myself because I'm the artist, remember? I get to decide if I want to change it just a little bit from what he suggests. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make mine like this with just a, a little eighth of a tail. And then I'm gonna add a beak. And I like the orange beak, but it could have been a white, I mean a yellow beak or anything I want. So then I put that there. Is it starting to look like a bird? And then I can make a tulip. I love the tulip. Didn't we see a tulip in here? I think that was towards the back. So here's the tulip and I'm gonna start with a 
half, and then those quarters are going to go the opposite direction so it's not going to make a circle. It's going to make a tulip like that. And then I can scoot it up. I can scoot all this up, kind of keep it in the center. And then I can draw things to make it look like a bird. So here's his, whoops, that's more like a nostril, isn't it? And there's his eye. And then here's his legs coming down and setting on the, on the tulip. And then here's the stem of the tulip. It has the little, okay? So then I could glue all that down and I'd be really happy with my picture. So that's picture pie. I'd like you to give it a try and show me some of your pictures on the email, sarah.frosto at la-schools.net. See you soon. Bye.